21 minutes past nine here this morning on OTBM. We're going to talk about the retirement of Liam Sheedy as the manager of the Tipperary Hurlers with Paddy Stapleton in a couple of minutes' time. But first, Ashley O'Reilly is with us. Ashley, congratulations. What a call that was a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, you, yeah, finally somebody shows up in their jersey. Uh, yes, do you like it, Jer? Just for you. Me, the one. You called this um, a couple yeah. of weeks back. You said they were going to beat this Cork team. Three minutes left to go. It did not look like that was going to be the case. Oh my God, my heart. Oh my God. Just unbelievable. You, you couldn't write that like seven points down with three minutes to go and two two goals in the last minute to bring it to extra time. It's just incredible. And I think it just shows the grit, the determination and the character of the team because even when they were down that seven points, you know, I was watching it thinking, oh lads, it's gone. And I was thinking of coming here, speaking to you and thinking, geez, how am I going to face you? And I even watching them, they didn't look like that. You know, I seen Moira in the middle of the field and she was like, you know, encouraging the girls, come on, quick, quick ball, quick ball through the hand, let's go. There was no giving up and my God, yeah, they done it. <laughs> so just to recap, right, because people might not have seen the piece that we did last week. Meath were beaten by 40 points by essentially a similar Cork team. Some, some remnants of that team still exist. How long ago was that? Five years ago? 2015. That, that game was. So six years ago. And mm -hmm. here they are beating them in an All Ireland semi final to go through to play the dubs. It's an incredible turnaround. Like it's one of the great turnarounds in Irish sport. It, it really is. And it, it deserves that statement. It really does. Like it shows what it, going from intermediate up to senior can do. So I hope that the men's can look at this and see that, you know, they were down in the dumps getting trashed by teams in senior, 40 points to Cork. They go and they regroup and they build and this is what they come out with. So, it, yeah, it's just unbelievable. Just those girls and the effort and the time they put in and the coaching. You have to say, like watching that game, how they are coached is, is second to none. The plays they, they play, like the, the getting back, everybody gets back, everybody gets forward. And you have to be super, super fit to be on that me team. And that in the end, their fitness just pulled through, you know, going into that extra time. They were the better team in the second half, better team in, well, coming to the end of the second half. And then in extra time, definitely they were the better team. So, yeah, all credit to them. Just in, the, in case anybody thinks that we're exaggerating here and we're like saying 40 points, it was literally not, not an exaggerated. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't 20 points. No. Where it was 722 to three points was the uh, score um, in an All-Ireland Senior Championship qualifier in 2015. So, Ashling, in terms of what this means for women's football, in me put some context on that for us will you absolutely like that day when that game was played in 2015 there was text messages being sent around the county to get girls to turn up it was a complete gather up it wasn't the case that a team had been training away you know building towards this game we were in a bad state of affairs and then obviously went out and to get tumped by 40 points you know was maybe could have been the best thing that ever happened to me ladies football because on the back of that, they decided, look, we're going to regrade here. We're going to drop down to intermediate and go at it and, you know, just regroup and have a new fresh look on things. So it's just absolutely massive. Like my WhatsApp messages, uh, you know, with groups of all the different teams I'm with, they're buzzing. I'm with teams up and down as well. And they're just seeing what they can do. You know, I'm actually with a team of down who just started out and they've seen what Mead have done. And all of them from yesterday were like, God, it's possible. Like, you know, we you can do this. Nothing's impossible if you put the time and effort in. So it's just massive for, for football, for all the ladies' football. You know, I seen some of the Camogie players yesterday as well. And um, Kilkenny Grace Walsh, she was tweeting, My God, this would really inspire you what they've done. So yeah, it's it's unbelievable for just women's games in general. Now it's um the dubs in the final and they're pretty good. <laughs> but a bit like the men, they're kind of coming back to the pack a bit, are they? Yeah, absolutely. That's how I would describe them. You know, they are coming back a bit and they have a few injuries and stuff as well at the moment. So all of those things play a part. We didn't see Carla Rowe at the weekend. She wasn't featuring. Um, also, Neve McAvoy, she came on at the end, but she, she has a bit of a niggle. She named Goldrick is only coming back in. Neve Collins is out. So there's a few of these things that are, you know, going against them as well as they haven't been playing the best football this year. They let Mayo come back into it at the weekend. You know, it was five points in the end. But, you know, they should have ran out winners there. Mayo, look, no, no offence there. They weren't really at their best this year. So I really thought that Dublin should have put the, the game to bed early on. Uh, and they didn't. So there's a few questions over them that way. But look, they're the reigning champions. And 
it'll be a tough, tough task for me. But I think the good old Dublin needs rivalry is is what we need. And once they see that blue jersey, I think that'll uh, definitely spur them on. The, the the irony is probably that Cork and Mayo both started out the year thinking to themselves, right, there's one team to beat here, and they were devising plans all year to, to beat Dublin. And Meath probably haven't been thinking that way at all. There will be a, a freedom to those next few weeks, this free hit nature that we've seen so often mm -hmm. in the men's game, I guess, over the last couple of years, but definitely pertains to this, this Meath team over the next little while. That's it. They're just playing with no fear and nothing to lose. So when they go out every time, you know, it's, it's do our best girls, like see how we go. Geez, we're doing unreal to be in this position. They obviously want to win the games, but like, you know, that's the attitude they're going out with. And they're also underdogs every time. So this all plays a major part. Going into Crow Park as underdogs, you know, loving it. Like that's exactly what they want. And it's played to them in every game so far. So look, hopefully now if coming up against the dubs, that it's that again, they're underdogs, nothing's expected of them. So you just you just never know with this new team. You don't know what they're going to do. They have the team. They have the talent. You know, they have it all in their locker to get over the line against the Doves. I do believe it. I do think it's going to be an absolutely tough task. It's, you know, I was dead sure against Cork and look, it, it went right to the wire. But I think with the Doves, it, it's going to be an unbelievable final. And as you said, Dublin didn't think that they'd be there. Mayo didn't think that they'd be there. No one did. No one was thinking about them and they loved it. They've never been in a senior final before. This is this is the first time I think something like 17, 18 counties maybe have, have been in senior finals. Me, me, they're not one of them, and and a county mm -hmm. we would associate with such a, a great footballing tradition. Th this is this is the beginning, Ashling. And as as much as the team right now will not be seeing it like that, they will be looking at this as a final to be won right now. But if that has happened over the course of of six years, you can only imagine what the future might hold. That's it, Owen. Like I don't see this team going anywhere. So whatever happens in this. All Ireland senior final is it, it'll be great if they do it, but it doesn't matter because this team is here to stay. They're so young. Emma Duggan, who scored one five, I think she got in the end yesterday, unbelievable at 18 years of age. It's it's just madness, you know. And she just had no fear, does all the confidence in the world to slot home that goal to just put them to the extra time, like just unreal. So as you said, it, it's it, they're here to stay. And it's going to spur on all those young girls here in the county to see that, look, it's possible. Because I'm not going to lie, I grew up never seeing me on telly. I never seen them, you know, winning anything. We, you know, we went to the odd game. There wasn't that real big buzz about them because they weren't really winning. There's a massive buzz now. Everyone's behind them. The football they play uh, all over the country, everyone's behind them because the football they play is just so good to watch. So, yeah, it's going to be massive for the county and massive for all the girls playing. Well, listen, uh, congratulations. Another OTB are <laughs> celebrating this morning. Uh, a good call, a brilliant call, Ashley. Well done. And we'll, we'll obviously have plenty of time to preview the All-Ireland Final too. So uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Cheers. Absolutely. Up the Royals. That's Ashley O'Reilly there. There's too many <laughs> Mead people involved in this show. Like there, There's already too many Mead people involved in this show. Um, what are they going to be like when the men and women start winning? Uh, well, I mean, this is something that we... You, you'll have to educate me on what it was like in, I don't know, 2001. Uh, How close? How close are the, the men's team to being properly competitive? Like, do we now have to go back and recalibrate all of the, the Leinster performances this year? Are Wexford looking at that performance going, Jesus? I think, I think everyone is. I think if Meath and Kildare aren't feeling some level of regret after Saturday, then something is desperately wrong in both of those counties because they need to see that as the next step. The, the, the Leinster Championship, you, sh you would like to think, is, is on over the next little while. I, I think next year may be a little bit too soon, but we should see proper heart-stopping games. And like, there, there's been nothing better in Irish sport over the last couple of years than seeing that Dublin team push to the pin of their collar. And it would be amazing to start seeing that earlier in the season and more frequently. So yeah, maybe maybe this is where Meath come in and, and, and give us a few early summer uh, classics between themselves and Dublin and, and spark a rivalry that's been dormant for way too long.